please welcome President of Mohawk Valley Edge, Steve DeMeo. Senior Vice President of Global Quality, Woolspeed, Lisa Fritz. And please welcome the 57th Governor of the Great State of New York, Governor Kathy Hochul. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. If you build it, they will come. And that is the premise behind why we're here today in Marcy. First of all, it's great to be back. We've been here many times. I was so proud to be here as a fairly new governor. Now I'm getting almost two years, so I'm feeling, I'm feeling it. <laughs> but also to be here to make that extraordinary announcement about Wolf Speed, um, a $1 billion investment, over 600 jobs. That does not happen every single day, so uh, it's proof that we're gonna do every, even more. Today, we're going to plant the seeds to bring new life to an open dirt field just a few hundred yards up the hill. So when I do see an open field, I can't help but think of the field of dreams and the voice of God from the cornfield who said, with great authority, if you build it, they will come. One of the greatest lines of all time. But that is exactly what this announcement is all about. If we build and prepare and get the land ready, the jobs, the businesses, the opportunities will come. And what is so exciting is that I'm joined by incredible individuals who've worked so hard to make this happen. I wanna first of all thank you're going to be hearing from Steve DeMeo. I'll be introducing you momentarily, but uh, certainly what you've done, your tenacity with Mohawk Edge, uh, making sure that the state knows your needs of this region and you speak with great authority. So I want to thank him. Let's give a round of applause to Steve DeMeo, Mohawk Valley Edge. I want to thank SUNY Poly for welcoming us. We have Dr. Andrew Russell, the officer in charge, and I'm uh, very happy to have your leadership here as well at this outstanding institution that we're so proud of. We also have our great partners in state government. Senator Joe Griffo, who agrees with me 100% of the time, every time. Uh, it's wonderful to see you, Senator, and, he, and thank you for your leadership in this region. A uh, great friend of mine, Assembly Member Marianne Buttonshawn, and I want to thank her for, first of all, introducing me to her adorable daughter, her granddaughter, who's now seven years old, but also uh, you've been tireless in your passion to make sure that this region gets what it deserves, and you've been heard. I want you to assure you've been heard. Uh, we have a cell member, Brian Miller, and a cell member, Brian Smullen. I thank them for joining us here as well. Our town supervisor, who I did see last time, supervisor, uh, I was in town government for 14 years, so I always have to acknowledge and show high levels of respect to the supervisors, the people who are in the trenches, but Marcy is a great community, and I thank you for your leadership, Brian Scala. And a great friend of mine, Jackie Izzo, the Rome mayor. A lot of great things have been happening in Rome. Jackie, where are you, Jackie? There you are. Uh, what a great community that is. It just continues to get better and better all the time. And of course, uh, we have the president of, this, of the council of, of here at SUNY Poly, Roanne Destito. Roanne, thank you for all you've done here. We also have our Larry Gilroy, our Mohawk Valley REDC co-chair. And you'll be also hearing from, I love the words, Wolf Speed, Lisa Fritz, and you'll be hearing what their plans are as well. So what we have to do here is plan ahead. You can't just hear that a big company wants to go somewhere in the country and then try to decide to recruit them when you don't have the land and the infrastructure shovel ready. So we needed a space that would allow us to be able to land the next big one. And when we talk about how we do that, we've had great success. We did this with Micron. Micron could have gone anywhere in the country. In fact, they were planning going somewhere else in the country. But when they saw a shovel ready site in the town of Clay, not that far from here, that made it so much easier that they would not have to go through all the regulatory burdens and questions. Is, after many years, is this finally going to be approved or turned down? And so we have to give businesses the clear path, the knowledge that if they come here, it will work out and they will not have any, any undue delays. So that's why we landed Micron. AMD just opened offices 
in Fishkill and Rochester. Again, all part of us cultivating that high-tech industry here in upstate New York. And that continues today as we lay the groundwork for a space that will attract the next big company and hire graduates from this very institution because we produce the best, the smartest. And that is why we are so attractive to companies coming here. And also, we want the businesses that will help power our economy upstate for decades to come. And so, my time as Lieutenant Governor, I crisscrossed the state trying to convince companies to move here. And I know that what they're always looking for was something, some assurances. Employers, as I said, want to know that the permits are in place, the infrastructure is right, and work can begin almost immediately because time is money. And that is exactly what we're doing here. You know, we think about this area as well. I talk about how we want to position ourselves for the jobs of the future and for and create generational wealth based on people who stay here, not, not leave as has happened for so long. This area was the heart of the textile industry. It also had, at one time, one of the wealthiest per capitas in America. This city nearby was one of the wealthiest. And we obviously lost that by mid-century, last century. Deindustrialization had a big impact. It wasn't just here. It was not just the Mohawk Valley. It happened everywhere as textile mills went overseas, went down south. It was a hard hit for our region, but also for our psychology, how you feel about a region. And when the jobs disappeared, many times hope disappeared. And this is something that I know all too well coming from Buffalo. That was the story of my childhood. And it strips you of your pride and your purpose. And it's, it's hard to recover from that. People do stop believing and they start thinking, well, like, I don't raise my kids here, but they're going to leave anyhow, and I'll have to leave. And it's just, it's, it's hard. And so, seared in the knowledge of what this area has been through for decades, I said, we're never going back there. Never, ever going backwards. And so, it starts about bringing the elite companies that will follow when the land is ready, but also, again, making sure we have a, a pipeline of qualified employees. And that's what's so important leveraging what we have here. I talk to companies from all over the country all the time. They point out to me how extraordinary our educational institutions here are here in upstate New York. Don't take that for granted. Don't take that for granted at all. We are the envy of many parts of this country. And you talk about our high quality of life here, more affordable way to live, the fact that no one has long commutes stuck in traffic. I'm, when I'm in Buffalo, if anyone drives more than 20 minutes to work, they said, I'm not going. I'm 20 minutes too far. Why would I go 20 minutes? So that's our mentality. But we also have low-cost power. We have plentiful water and resources. We have charm. We have beauty. We have great attractions, the north and the Adirondacks and the rivers and the Erie Canal. My God, we have it all here. And let's never lose sight of that. We have to be our greatest champions and not have a defeatist attitude that I saw as part of the mentality of the region I grew up in. We have to brush that off because I believe confidence breeds confidence. When we're recruiting businesses, when they see that we've got that swagger now, it's like, oh, you want to come here? You want to join Wolf Speed? Because Wolf Speed, did I tell you Wolf Speed was here already? Did I tell you Micron's going down the road? Did I tell you about these other businesses that we're building on, all these great high-tech industries? Embrace the swagger of upstate New York because you have reason to boast and be proud. And the people who stayed here through the tough times, many came from other countries, their grandparents, great-grandparents, and they settled here because of the good jobs. And I'm so excited to know that the children of today and their children will be able to stay here because of the jobs. That is going to make a huge difference, and this is why people want to be here. So today, talking about not just being skill ready and a community ready, we have to be shovel ready. I'm proud to announce $40 million in Fast New York. Fast New York means we're going to get everything ready. Seven new sites will be funded to get them ready around the state. Someday, they will house the emerging industries of the future, and I'm talking about renewable sciences, life sciences, agribusinesses, as well as high tech. But the moment you've been waiting for is how much are you getting, or else why am I here today, right? I can say, like, what is she talking about? Of that 40 million for the entire state, we're allocating 14 million for Mohawk Valley Edge to further develop the Marcy Nano, Nano Center site. So congratulations, congratulations. 
We believe that this will plant the seeds for a semiconductor supply chain campus, literally right here. I think this is the, the immediate opportunity, just a few hundred yards from where we're standing. It means that the excavation, the, art, the, the moving of the earth, the, uh, the infrastructure, it doesn't have to wait any longer. $14 million means it can start right now. I am very impatient. I want to start seeing the businesses show up here soon. I want to use my scissors and shovel constantly in this place, and that's what we're launching here today. So that's what we're doing. We're going to be continuing attracting those businesses here. You heard it here first, that we're going to be doing this all over the country. And I want to untangle that supply chain. You know, we heard about why Detroit was having trouble getting cars in the hands of consumers right after the pandemic. It wasn't the pandemic. It was that the chips going into vehicles were inaccessible because we're making them overseas. I no longer want to be reliant ever on a foreign-based supply chain because that can paralyze us. And there's geopolitical factors. When we rely on a certain country and we have different relationships, they can cut us off. We have to build that resiliency, that independence, right here in America, right here in the state of New York. And that's how we cut our dependence. That's how we lead the world. So today, the groundwork is being made, and we start, and we're going to continue strengthening the roots right in that field. And yes, this area will be known as the field of dreams. And because of that, I'm going to invite up Steve DeMeo, and you're going to tell me how this is going to become the field of dreams. You're going to tell us your vision, Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, let me present our next speaker, a tireless advocate for this community, Edge President Steve DeMeo. Thank you very much. Thank you. We did him. Hi. I think I'd rather talk about the field of dreams than the New York Yankees right now. <laughs> Governor, thank you, and thank you for joining us here today, and thank you for your commitments to this, to this region and, and for the Fast New York Initiative and the Green Chips Act, which I think are, are two strategic investments that really put New York State in an enviable position to capture a key part of the technology investments that are likely to happen here in the United States, both in the semiconductor industry, clean energy, and advanced manufacturing. So we thank you very much for all of your support and, uh, and your commitment uh, to this region. So uh, yeah, we, we basically have a 434 acre site. Uh, most of the site has had a significant amount of site and infrastructure investment made, which has made it possible for us to attract wolf speed. In fact, back in 2019, when uh, Howard Zemsky was mentioning to uh, all the attendees at the Wolf Speed announcement that we even had a good power set up, Greg Lowe leaned over to me and said, if you didn't have that substation, I wouldn't be here. So, um, so we've been well positioned. Back in 2019, uh, when Wolf Speed announced that it was selecting Marcy for its new state-of-the-art 200 millimeter silicon carbide fab on a portion of the Marcy site, to be the first largest and only silicon carbide semiconductor manufacturing facility in the world. You know, I don't think we realized at the time what that would mean in terms of uh, what would happen here in the region. Of course, that fab was built in the middle of a pandemic also. So it was great last April to have the governor here, along with a number of uh, key stakeholders, including Wolf Speed, to cut the ribbon on the brand new silicon carbide fab, which is a uh, ramping product, producing product for customers, and as Lisa will tell you, she's bringing customers through here all the time. So we're pleased to see uh, all of that happening. And I think that's remarkable that it's happened in a relatively short period of time, despite the fact that we lived in COVID, COVID world for two years. Um, in fact, Wolf Speed has announced that they're looking to double its investment to build out the balance of the site. They only built out half the factory, and they have plans to fit out the balance of the factory and to tool it so they can optimize all the production capability of, uh, of its uh, semiconductor facility here. So Wolf Speed has uh, reached its 400, uh, recently hired its 400th employee. It's on track to hire 600 employees and probably will do that ahead of its original projections uh, when it committed to locate here. But more importantly, we also are working with a number of other key um, technology companies, we're fortunate that we have Semicron Dan Foss located here on the SUNY Poly campus. They have uh, 275 employees, you know, there's, 
adding uh, tool lines to the power module facility. We're looking to launch a supply chain facility on the Marcy Nano Center site, uh, and we'll have some supply chain companies located nearby. Um, and I think also very important that what's happening here in New York State, because of the CHIPS Act, the Green CHIPS Act, and a real federal industrial policy, you know, we are building a, a semiconductor corridor along the I-90 corridor here with Micron, Wolf Speed, Global Foundries, key supply chain companies such as uh, Tokyo Electron, Applied Materials, and others. Uh, and you have state-of-the-art research facilities at Albany Nanotech that New York State is clearly a national research and development hub for an important industry that's vital for our national security interests here. So the balance of the Marcy Nano Center site, the 127 acres that will be focused on Will Fast New York, will basically be doing some site prep work to position that site so it is truly shovel ready and would be uh, easy for a company to access and to get a shovel in the ground and build and begin building uh, additional manufacturing space. That site could support two more fabs, and uh, we look forward to locking in interest and a commitment uh, with an additional uh, semiconductor or supply chain company here. So again, Governor, we want to thank you for all your support and your team for all the support they have provided us over, I would say, the past 20 years. So it has been a bit of a long journey, um, but it's been a journey that's had produced uh, very good results. So thank you very much. It's also my honor now to introduce Lisa Fritz uh, with uh, Wolf Speed who's a frequent visitor here, and, uh, and Wolfspeed has been a tremendous strategic partner who's not only made a, a key investment in this area, but has also uh, been a key part of the team that's focusing on talent attraction, talent development, and all the key things that are necessary to build a world-class workforce. So Lisa? So thank you, Steve, and thank you, Governor, for your kind words about Wolf Speed. And I'd like to start by saying today's announcement is a testament to what can happen when a shared vision for progress and the right organizations come together to make that vision a reality. So I'd like to start by thanking the Mohawk Valley Edge for its unwavering support for Wolf Speed through all of this and the commitment to making this region a leading location in the U.S. for technological innovation and for bringing all of us together around this shared vision. It is a significant milestone that further cements the Mohawk Valley's status as an emerging powerhouse for the semiconductor industry. This new ready-to-go site serves as a beacon of opportunity and a field of dreams. I'll use that as well. Um, inviting tech industries to build upon the remarkable progress that we've achieved since becoming a part of this vibrant community since 2019 when we announced. The Empire State Development's goal to accelerate the growth of New York's technology ecosystem finds a partner in the Mohawk Valley site. By providing opportunities for tech industries to build upon the existing progress, this site plays a crucial role in shaping the region into an emerging leader in the semiconductor industry. The site's potential for attracting other industries is directly tied to the advancements of the local and facilitated by the Marcy Center, further bolstered by the success of Wolf Speed. As this site continues to evolve to get shovel ready, it really becomes a magnet for top tier industries to choose the Mohawk Valley. A few years ago, Wolf Speed visited this location, and I was part of that team, and we saw the potential. And we are not one to wait in the wings. We wanted to be the first out here and help prove that the vision and foresight for this location would really live up to its potential, and it has. The Wolf Speed facility is one of the most advanced and largest 200 millimeter silicon carbide semiconductor fabs in the world. And the chips that come out of here will end up in products all over the world, from electric cars to electric planes, from data centers to HVAC systems, chips that are built by local talent. 
and the community has made uh, a great effort in training the workforce and in developing the sites to facilitate this type of global impact. I am proud to say that the global success of Wolf Speed has served as a catalyst, attracting other industry leaders to join us in this transformative journey. The commitment of New York State towards semiconductor manufacturing is truly inspiring. And it's a commitment that radiates, connecting industries along the throughway from Albany to Buffalo. And the ripple effect of this commitment is really palpable as innovation fuels growth across diverse sectors. As part of the Wolfspeed family, we extend a warm invitation to new technology leaders to explore this remarkable region. With transformational state investments driving the completion of areas such as the Wynn Hospital, the resounding success of the Nexus Center, we're witnessing a resurgence of the Mohawk Valley that is truly nothing short of remarkable. And with that, I will close and say thank you. And I've been told to mention that we have um, some videos coming up, um, so don't leave yet. <laughs> thank you. Please remain seated during the check presentation for the opportunity. Thank you. 